Alachua County is home to a lot of history. One of the county's most famous and important historical gems is the Hale Homestead at Kanapahaw Plantation. Hale is one of the only remaining antebellum homes in North Central Florida. It was added to the National Registry of Historic Places in 1986. We in Alachua County government are proud to do our part to help preserve this fascinating piece of the past for future generations to enjoy. The Hale Homestead tells a story of struggle and triumph, of happy times and hard times, of wealth gained and lost and regained, and freedom regained. It tells an American story and an Alachua County story. It's hands-on history. Their joys and their sorrows, those things are written on the walls of this house. But who were the original Alachua County Hales? Thomas Evans Hale and his wife Serena Chestnut Hale came to this area from Camden, South Carolina in 1854 and established a 1,500-acre Sea Island cotton plantation on this site. They named it Kanapaha, which is Indian for small thatched houses. They meant to move to Missouri, but they missed the wagon train in Charleston and decided to head to Florida instead, settling in Alachua County. A railroad which would pass through the county was under construction, and that would guarantee the crops could reach markets. The homestead was completed in 1856, built by enslaved laborers and based upon the design of Thomas Evans Hale. This is one of the few remaining antebellum homes in north central Florida. It's got a combination of architectural styles. It's got some Greek revival and southern Georgian, and you see that in the transom and side lights and the columns coming out from the porch. And it's got 12-foot ceilings in there. But it's also got some elements of cracker in that it has a high-pitched roof and a southern exposure. Thomas and eldest son John rode in the 5th Battalion Cavalry of the Confederate Army, and the house itself played host to history and the Confederate treasure train, carrying what was left of the Confederate treasury at the war's end. When they stopped in Archer, which was the home of David Lee Viuli, Florida's first senator, they learned that the president of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis, had been captured in Georgia. So they split up the remainder of the treasury and headed out. Two members of that Confederate treasure train, Tench Tillman and Sid Winder, stayed overnight at this house. And we have Tench to thank for that little fact because he wrote about it in his diary and the hospitality he was afforded when he stayed here. In 1867, the Hales faced bankruptcy due to crop failure. The plantation was placed on the auction block. Thomas's brother, Edward, came to the family's aid. Edward Hale reportedly showed up at that auction and bought this house and all of the Hales' property. Ultimately, Serena Hale was in a position in the early 1870s to buy the house and 40 acres, plus an additional 70 acres back. Serena's journals reveal that by 1873, she had taken over the day-to-day -day operation of the plantation, and she had learned from the bankruptcy. Serena was a very wise woman. She diversified. She grew oranges, pinto peaches, and Kelsey plums, all kinds of potatoes, uh, watermelons, squash. The Hale Plantation was prosperous again, but it could not have been without the hard work of black laborers, once slaves, now free. Bennett Kelly grew up on the plantation and returned around 1883, now a free man, to work as caretaker. Bennett was so loved by the family that Serena, prior to her death, told the family that Bennett should be buried in the family plot when he died. And ultimately, when he died in the 1930s, he was buried in the Kanapaha Church plot, the Hale family plot. Thomas Hale died in the mid-1890s, and Serena Hale died shortly after. The home was willed to Evans Hale, the 14th of 15 children. Evans was a prominent Gainesville defense attorney. He and his wife used the home to entertain on weekends, holding elaborate parties, dances, picnics, and fox and quail hunts. One of the most unique features of the home is its talking walls. It seems the Hale family had a particular, peculiar tradition. See, the Hale family had the unusual habit of writing on their walls, and there are over 12,500 words written on the walls of this house. When I documented them, I found them in just about every room and closet. This is where I found the oldest dated writing in the house. It was done by Ben Hale, 
and he would have been seven years old when he wrote his name in 1859. Messages run the gamut from recipes and addresses to portraits and other drawings. Partygoers in the early 1900s through the 1930s also got in on the act. And very typical of the writing in this room is this one. It says, impromptu dance, May 18, 1904, Mrs. Rachel Hale, chaperone. Serena Hale also may have had a more practical reason for making notes on the walls. She would run out of paper and write on whatever she could find, including the walls. And then later, when she got her packet of paper in, she would rewrite it word for word in her diary. The house was boarded up and abandoned from the 1930s until the 1970s, when University of Florida architecture students rediscovered it. In 1986, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places. Today, it is well on the way to returning to its former glory, thanks to the historic Hale Homestead Incorporated nonprofit corporation. You really get a sense of history and stepping back in time when you walk into this house. There's probably no other place like it in the entire country, and Alachua County is so blessed to have a place like this that they can share with the rest of the country. The homestead is funded in part by the Alachua County Tourist Development Tax on visitors to the county. It is open to the public for tours on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and on Sundays from 12 to 4 p.m. To visit the homestead online, go to www.halehomestead.org. For County Update, I'm Alan Yetter.